So, next speaker, Marwa Tinch from Fidzai. of closed environments and what you can do. So basically, um, there are a lot of companies that work in um, closed environments that actually you cannot do many things after it's been deployed to your clients, right? So we will, I will speak briefly like with 20 minutes. I'll speak a little bit about the challenge uh, during the last years but in the companies I've worked on and uh, the changes that we are actually doing, for instance, in Fizai with the um, with the closed environments that we are facing now. So, a little bit about myself. Where should I point this? Okay, this was the right, the, the right button. Okay, so a, a little bit uh, about myself. So, 34 years. Actually, I forgot to tell that I have one kid, so basically you'll put there like 44 uh, automatically, because kids are a challenge. Um, so I've been working on, in IT, so as a developer, then as a, a manager for the last 10 years. Uh, at the moment, I'm the software delivery manager at Feedsai, and uh, basically I'm leading engineering teams uh, for the last five years uh, on <laughs> these companies that are uh, described here. Okay, so. Let's start this. Um, imagine a world like where you can actually uh, release a, a product and uh, it, it usually goes like this. So in, in, in theory, like when you have a, um, a SaaS product and you have like a, a small company, you can actually do these type of things where you, so where the QA gets, to, to gets next to the developer and say, look dude, there's a problem in production and you go there and you, yeah, so screwed up really, really big time and actually it's only been there for the last 10 minutes so let's fix it and the guy goes there he actually fix uh, almost like real time and he ship it and it's great right so it's really really nice I would really <laughs> like to be in this position and uh, so but yeah that's not what I'm here to talk about and uh, this is like the perfect the perfect scenario and it was like uh, and it's a, a really good one so yeah the not so beautiful world of iOS app. So they are beautiful, they work great. Sometimes they are native, sometimes they are not. That is a, another discussion. Um, but it's, re it's really challenging working on, the, on iOS because usually this is what happens. So you go there, build an app, it's really great. And th this will go harder and harder the, mo the moment you get like bigger and bigger. So if this is sometimes difficult when you have like two or three developers working in a company, imagine now <laughs> that you have, uh, like when I was in Glib, you have like 30, 36 developers working on a native app on iOS, doing like all the, pro uh, always committing code like every day, testing stuff, automation, all of that. So imagine the possibilities of things going wrong. Um, sometimes they, they did, sometimes they didn't. So, this is the thing, so you, you only have that one delivery channel. Like it's there, it's controlled. You have like <laughs> Apple saying, these are the strict rules, you need to follow them. If you don't, you basically don't accept. I guess like if probably like many of you that are working on iOS, and I've seen a couple of guys that I know very well in their companies, um, yeah, so they've been through this and it's really challenging. You have multiple versions in production. So uh, although the adoption is really nice and it's probably the, the best in the market, you still see like things take a little bit of time and you actually don't never get to 100% uh, adoption from your customers, right? So you, you always have to deal with legacy. You have multiple device layouts. 
I still remember when we we, uh, we didn't have Retina displays. Anyone? Yeah, who, who were part of it? So when we started, it was like a, a big issue. If you're an iOS developer, you still remember like the the thing where you, like the the images and the like a uh, I don't remember the word in English, but basically like a whole, a whole two. <laughs> The, the things like with a big and good resolution for those screens and you know, like another big challenge, like submitting on those conditions were really, really hard when you have big things. And, and then you have like <laughs> days between hitting the button versus really the two customers. It was a lot worse than it is now. Actually now it's like, it's easy. For us that we spent so many times working on iOS and it went through the process of probably like iOS 3, um, it was really, really a pain and it was a frustration. And basically we were very scared to ship stuff into production because the problems of things going well, uh, well were not that high. Um, and then when you, basically when you screw up, you need to wait, right? So you screw up, you see you, you screw up, you get nervous, everyone starts panicking, you have like the, the product guys or actually like your boss saying, oh, we're screwed, like things are on release and then um, customers are seeing this and sometimes the app doesn't even open. Right? It's really, really bad. So the, the, the important thing like the, to, to take from here is really take control of every feature and who has access to it. So we, we know that it's, diffi it's difficult depending on the company that you, did, uh, uh, that you are, uh, it's difficult for, for this, right? So you need to spend time to actually do these things. These things will take time. And sometimes when you have to explain this to people, they say, yeah, but what about the customer? This doesn't bring any new features, so this is not cool. So this will not take us to the next level. This will not be, we will not be better than the competition if you spend doing, uh, time doing this. And that is not actually correct, and we, we've been there. And the thing is, if you want to take control of things, you basically do these type of things. And, um, so th this is like, th this is very um, close to iOS development, but then I, I will basically talk about other early challenges where we are actually trying to do the same thing. So always try to disable or enable a feature by your by the release version, by each country, by each channel, and toggles or throttles controlled by a CMS. So imagine like, um, <laughs> you have the full power of doing anything on your application and actually um, take control of it and not spending. So, okay, let, let, me, let me go back. So basically, I have had times uh, during my, uh, my professional experience where we were like panicking and you get like nervous to su submit a, a, a build into production. And you're when you're talking about tens of thousands of customers and you can probably lose a lot of money, that is hard, right? No one is actually com um, happy about it. And we were like really, really nervous and we tried to do this type of things where you can actually uh, take control and this changed a lot the way that we, we ship in software. So always try to do these little things. So uh, try to take control of your release versions. So basically, you know which version you are um, you are releasing, and you can basically do things to that specific version that do not affect the others. So if something goes wrong in, the, in that version, you will basically disable, or actually, and then if it's fixed, you will basically enable to that particular feature, and then the other ones, uh, actually, to that particular feature in that particular release, and the others and the, the other customers will not be affected by that, and actually, the, the other releases will not be affected by it. So by each country, and again, something that's happened to me is that sometimes different countries with different legislations that you are not aware of um, make you do things that you are actually, that you basically never thought of. So let's say that, uh, the, I guess Oliana was talking a little bit about problems with security and problems with the data that you collect from your users, and that is important. So in some particular countries, that sometimes you don't know about it because yeah, you are doing your things, you are doing, you're developing your stuff, and then someone say, yeah, so this is the product, this is the vision, this is the functionality that you need to do. And well, in the day-to-day -day basis, sometimes you forget about stuff, or it, it, 
actually didn't spend the time to actually go there and uh, think about these little things and what about this country or about the legislation of this country. And well, sometimes things can go bad. So if you try to do the same thing with your features, or actually with your apps uh, by country, um, that is great. And um, I'm, I'm not talking about you disabling that application on that country from being uh, downloaded because this will not fix your problem. Like you will stop having people adding, uh, downloading our application and actually being able to um, use the application that you, you said it's not cool uh, or you, you know that it's not cool. Um, but actually you, um, you will basically um, use your, uh, well, basically you will not have your, well, you, you will have your application working <coughs> on that country and uh, you will use, like I, I have here CMS we started with the JSON file back in the days with no version control, and um, and then sometimes we, well in the beginning then we changed it to C to uh, CMS controlled environments to do these type of things, and then so I'm not talking about you stopping the co the consumers or the, your users from downloading it. I'm actually saying this version will be like a totally different version for that country, although we already we already put it there into production and guys can actually download it, okay? Then by each channel, so this is also important because sometimes in the, now, now you have the thing where you have the, well, that's not totally true, but you have the, this idea where mobile is always first. So you think on your mobile devices and then you go to the, what I call, well, I call it big web, you can call it web or whatever, but um, you have this where you actually control the channel because sometimes things work on one and sometimes things don't work on, uh, in another. And it basically also adds up to the number or time the tests you actually do or you can actually do in a short amount of time. Sometimes that happens also. So how all this experience uh, started? Oh, okay, so Corey, you can. Okay, so basically, <coughs> All of these uh, ideas, and I will sp speak about my personal experiences, that all started when we actually released a version that was working on iPhone and was not opening on an iPad. And you go there, like you're nervous, you're doing this thing where first time you actually do a JSON file, where you actually say, iPad version, this, this enable, you are enable these features, this iPad version, uh, or iPad or iPhone, uh, you can basically control everyone, uh, every single feature, so <laughs> that's okay, we are good. Although we are still nervous because we are not very sure how this will work because sometimes the client downloads the app, opens, then he actually, sometimes he closes, sometimes he doesn't. So, and we're basically loading the JSON when we're starting the app, so how will this work? So we were nervous. And actually, <laughs> the first time that we deployed it, that this happened. So version was a success, so people were, our QA, like we, we hit the button, things start showing up on the, on the, on the app store, and you, everyone down yeah, it's okay, congratulations everyone, and then you receive like an email and a screenshot from like one of the toppest person in your um, uh, like multi-country, like it's everywhere type of company, and you get a message from the senior guy from the product saying, well, the app doesn't open on my iPad. I can guarantee you, but the guy that developed that is here and he can probably talk, talk a little bit about that. Like we were looking at each other and say, yeah, dude, like we screw up big time. So it, this feature doesn't open. And it was actually one of the big features that we were having for that release. So yeah, so we start thinking, yeah, we have these little things like these sheets and let's try it. And actually basically save, <coughs> save the day because we basically said, yeah, so this version um, for iPad, this version will not have this functionality uh, being loaded. And it actually solved the problem and we were have, very happy. And well, there, there was a little thing where we can actually could say, please version just, uh, well, we basically made it, made it crash. And we could say that we could tell the, the, app, the application to crash. So it basically load again all the JSON configuration for the iPad. And this will save the day. But this was not the worst thing that happened to us. So like, there are times when all goes wrong. 
Um, I'm not sure uh, if you, many of you have been there, but sometimes like when, times where literally like everything goes wrong, okay? Let me tell you like one of the worst days that, we, that I personally had and probably like a lot of guys from my team that are actually here, I've seen, I've seen them here and uh, let me tell you just like uh, when the day that everything was not okay for us and everything was wrong. So imagine this, you'll be, develop you'll be developing things for the last three months, 30, 36 guys. And um, we did, uh, we did the, the, all this effort, everyone was developing the, the, the application, everything was fine. We actually hit the button to release, major party, and like th this is true. So let's say that there is a pop-up that every time you load the app, we validate a, a thing where actually a pop-up will show to you and say, do you want to do like this or this? And you have two buttons. This will pop-up sh probably showed up like 3,000, 5,000, 6,000 times. And we hit the button, we do like a mega party, like all of everyone celebrating really hard. And then someone uses the app and say, look, like this left button doesn't work. And it was like the, the most important button that you actually had on all the application because it will, prob it will allow your users to put money in your company, right? <laughs> if you know, like, if you know the application, you know, like, this is a big thing. So people will deposit money on, yeah, through that, uh, through that, people will spend money on your company and actually do their own deposit thing. And yeah, so next day, Saturday, Everyone was really happy. Like everyone had a major dinner. It was really, really nice. You get this email, and what do you, what do you do? Like every so we go through all the process of CI stuff. Everything is great, and you do this type of things. And how do you tell everyone? Like the thirty-six guys, like, dude, well, actually, like there is a button there that sh shows every single tab, and no one actually thought about clicking it. So we basically, there was one guy that changed the code and deployed alone, like no parties. It was like the hero. So a Saturday night, he was alone doing this stuff, like correcting the issue. He submitted and pro almost no one actually knew about it. And everyone was happy because we released on Friday. So it was a, a, a really funny story. Another one, really, really hard, like the day when everything went bad. Probably second worst day of my life. Um, at least like professional one, okay? So let's say the context is five days event, major one in the season, like, like big, big, big stuff, right? For the test team, okay, so I actually tested them myself. I shouldn't really, like the guys were, the guys know more about it than I actually do. But I was like, mm, yeah, so we have these current users, we have this, we will have probably like, we will have this load, everything seems fine, we will be okay. And I said to my manager, yeah, it will be okay. So everything was fine. Day one. So the, yeah, so people will start using the application like ninth. We have this thing called calls room when everyone from all teams get together and say, yeah, let's go, let's go and look at these graphics. You have like a line where it says from here, you screw up. Like everything is bad. So we start, we need to start new things. And um, like, yeah, so I get all, everyone was really happy in the office. So, yeah, like, everything is okay. Everyone's really happy. And we know for a fact that we are probably like this 70% of our customer base will go through the application, right? And we'll spend money through the application. Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, 10 a.m. Chaos in the, in the, the war room, the application. So, we, 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 you, we were uh, iOS developers. We started this crazy idea of doing the, the backend stuff. So no GS and all, all stuff. So if you know event loop delay, you know what happened. So we screw up an event loop delay, like things just started piling up and accumulating and it's like, yeah, it was not working because this was the first thing that we see was like this backend uh, thing. 10 a.m. chaos in the world, we forced the full phone back to the web version. So we don't have this mobile web versus native stuff. Sometimes they actually help us. Although they were like, uh, uh, well, kind of afraid because there will be like 60 
percent of our load will be we will go to them, so we will be um, not happy. Uh, so with this, we did it with our toggle. So we basically said every application, uh, every time a user tries to load stuff, they will go to the mobile app. You wouldn't know this apart from the application was not that good to, to the mobile app. Um, so at, four, uh, at two, we turn on the current version, so app toggle, then falling back to the old version of the feature, like feature toggle. There was like a genius that said, yeah, so we are doing all these things. Maybe we should use the, uh, we should put there the old version of the, the, the feature because we know that it was working. So yeah, this guy saved the day because we basically could build up the native app, but we said stop this new, this new feature and actually use the, the old one that is still native and still cool. Day two, we were live again at 6 p.m. and uh, like the second day, so basically we'll turn on the feature toggle. During this process, we actually created 32 machines in AWS to basically try to handle the load of the, the screw up that we did on Node.js. But yeah, it was fun. It worked, actually, like so. Second day, it was working. But it shows you the power of having control of everything that you develop. You can say, turn this on, turn this off. This is iOS. So new stuff, five months ago, on premises. Yeah, so you deploy stuff to the to the clients, and it's there. You have no control over it because the guys have their server, and it's like really crazy, right? So the clients are hard. These type of clients will usually are hard, and really really hard. So basically, if we're talking about Fizzai and these customers, you know this is like major major guys that have so much load, and it's so much. Uh, sometimes intense, the, the, the delivery process, that it's really, really, um, it's really, really hard, so they install their stuff on their, uh, their, they install their stuff, right? So First Data and Reliance, First Data is one of the biggest player in the world in terms of credit card, and uh, Reliance is like the biggest guys on the phone market in India, they control like everything, basically, in terms of communication. Yeah. So three months approval process, I'm used to like, two days or three days. Yeah, support and delivery teams working on top of our code. So you have like three teams working on product, you know, like these support guys changing everything. And you have these delivery guys doing custom stuff to your code. And you're like, this is not, I'm not used to this. And uh, so product stuff, releasing a product to clients is not releasing a feature internally. And this is a very important thing that you need to, to think about. So, Doing internal release, came up with a release framework that people understand. Always focus on quality, try not to focus on delivery dates. It's easy, and more, most important that you will spend time doing stuff, but you will say to people, like, if the client is not happy and we still see any hey, screw up next time, they will not come back. And this, we have seen this before and before. Not really at Fizzai, because they are happy, but I've seen this happening before. And so we adopt these things called release trends. Some, most of you will probably. No, and we are getting there. It's not easy because this is like a, a, a big train moving. So version sprint work. So you work on Agile and sprints, two weeks. Every time you develop stuff, you put it in the developed branch. So our branch of every, where everyone's working. Have full confidence in what you're shipping. And this is really, uh, this is really important. So when, when, when I was in Blip, and this is like a, a thing that we were proud of, we stopped doing feature during one month. And we just did unit test, UI automation, and making sure that Jenkins was working. Uh, Errors was green, okay? Automate the hell of your CI to comply things upon each merge with live validation, and probably you can create some heavier jobs. And no matter what, this is important to you if you're handling clients and product, will say, yeah, dude, like, don't, endure, don't get nervous. You will always have the next train. So every day, like, if you're going to subway here in Metro, Metro the port, you'll, you'll know that, yeah, you will have to wait 15 minutes. We are not talking about 15 minutes. I'm not sure how, how fast you want or the schedule of your train, but you can basically do these type of things to make sure that people don't get so nervous. And then, like, I, I'm not sure if you've seen this, uh, if you had this before, but basically, you should uh, stop the, the merging madness. So this is like Pizza, like, last release, and we were not have, we, we never had this release or anything. And uh, this is like two days, four of our top people, Merging stuff from everyone from the last four months. So, it was not easy. And people were like, 
car, uh, well, they were retired at the end. I'm not sure if you've been through this process, but basically merging all your code, uh, it's, not, it's not easy, right? So you spend three to four months like these big features, you have these big, big clients, and then it's not, it's not easy, right? So this is what happens to us. So important thing also, we are engineers, we do, we are really proud of our products, but you shouldn't be like, you should be okay. So you, you focus on quality, you focus on good things, you focus on delivering things with good performance that would never crash and are optimized and stuff. Like, so basically, you just decouple stuff. So yeah, they can do whatever they want. You just create tools that the product or your clients can work on and can play on, and basically it'll be okay. So this will take a lot of problems for you. Then basically that's it. So delegate all the control to your product team. And important stuff, so what you can change, so the summary, what you can change on Monday that will basically change the way you can probably like develop software in these situations. Make sure you have full control of every single thing you develop and release, and this is really important so you can basically do all those things. Um, prepare yourself for the worst, because it will probably test this thing today. <laughs> I will learn one time, two times. Uh, prepare yourself for the worst, because it will probably almost happen. Right? It's the way that you handle stuff and the way that your clients get bigger or a company get bigger that will basically um, do the trick. And it, it, this is really important because everyone can basically understand. So define a framework for a software review process that everyone can relate and play with. So say, this is two weeks, we'll train each two weeks, whatever is in development will go through our CI, it will be completely tested, everything is, will, will be great and you can basically install and, and do whatever you want with it. So the couple your decisions. And that's it. I can just install the system to do the text question. Okay. No question. Really? No one has no one, no one has been in this type of situation before. They were shocked with the Murphy's law happening so many times. Yeah. But yeah. Have you ever uh, get some troubles with the feature talking for US because of the Apple uh, Store removal? No. No. We never. We have never because, had. Because you could you could disable the feature for the US and then they could trigger something else. No. Actually, the, the thing is that at that time you couldn't develop stuff for US because they had like a, they control their betting. If you if you don't know, like basically the the, there is a specific group that controls all the betting and all the money goes to them and we cannot do anything about it. And basically we actually don't have the, the, the applications at least like one and a half years ago who we didn't have and uh, we never had this problem. So, and then we start doing the specific versions for the US to comply with the, 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 basically the, the problem that we had. They feel the pain, so basically. Mm -hmm. okay. They are trying from the inside. No? Well, thank you, Mark.